The Tyler brothers play on a school basketball team. The physical education teacher asks his son, Antoine Tyler, to stop shooting the ball into the parking lot. The team is only one point behind, and the man says his youngest son, Kenny Tyler, should make the last shot. All day away, wrote the boy's mother on a motivational poster to raise the team's spirits. Kenny is afraid to throw the ball, so he decides to pass it back to his older brother. However, Antoine fails to throw the ball and the team loses. The frustrated player, Antoine, is angry because he doesn't understand why he lost. Mr. Tyler reminds his sons to always play with passion and dignity. The most important thing in any skill is to love what you do. If the brothers always stick together, big wins are possible. His father talked to Kenny Tyler and asked him to have more faith in himself and his strength. Many years went by. Now, the Tyler brothers are the stars of the university team. Thanks to their efforts, the Washington Huskies could win the Champions League for the first time in a decade. During halftime, the team's mascot was injured and collapsed. Coach Peterson gives directions to the strong team. He threatens that if they break through to the basketball hoop, the coach will send the guys back to Siberia. After the conversation, Kenny Tyler intercepts the ball and gives it to his older brother. Antoine does a cool feint, a slam dunk. Commentators predict a professional career for Antoine. Mom congratulates her sons on their victory and says her father would be very proud. In the evening, the entire basketball team gathered at the bar. Encouraged by the victory, the boys decided to relax for a while. Kenny Tyler looks over at the curly-haired girl. At that moment, his full glass is knocked over by some nasty fat guy. The beer, spilling all over the counter, went straight into the smiling stranger's purse. Kenny Tyler had no choice but to apologize and quickly leave the bar. At the same time, Antoine got into the ring on a dare, standing with his back to it, tightly blindfolded. A girl named Cheryl approached him. She wasn't happy that the guy was only interested in basketball. The guy's first priority has always been competition, so he ignores the girl. Unfortunately, Kenny Tyler is not doing so well with girls. Right now to prove otherwise, he made a bet with his brother that he could get the phone number of absolutely any girl in the bar. Antoine pointed to the very stranger with whom they had met with glances earlier. The girl realized what was about to happen and simply left the establishment. Fortunately, the bar didn't limit their conversation and Kenny Tyler caught up with the girl. Strange that such a talented player turned out to be so clumsy. The sweet stranger gave her name, Street John, and left the guy alone. She advises him not to argue if you can't win. Turns out the girl is the new reporter at the student newspaper, and she was the one who complimented Kenny Tyler in the last article. The team has an important game tonight, and with four minutes to go, they win by two points. The basketball team is getting closer and closer to the championship. Kenny Tyler committed a foul, and after two free throws, the team went on the attack. The guy passed again to his older brother, and then something happened to him, and he just collapsed on the floor. Antoine was put on a stretcher and taken off the court. He promised his brother he'd come back soon and continue training. Kenny Tyler is very worried about him. Already on the street, Antoine began to lose his pulse, and a few moments later, in the ambulance, his heart stopped. The paramedics try to resuscitate the half-dead Antoine. Team Husky lost, but Kenny Tyler doesn't care. He quickly changes his clothes to go to the hospital. Coach Peterson enters the locker room with a sorrowful face. He reports that Antoine died on the way to the hospital. The whole basketball team hugs the upset guy. After the death of their best player, the team goes downhill. Four losses in a row. Kenny can't pull himself together and stop thinking about his older brother's death. He gets harassed by reporters who try to find out the reason for the constant fatalities. Left alone on the set, he speaks aloud to Antoine and says he can't do it by himself. He needs his brother's help. Street John approaches the guy to offer his condolences and a little encouragement in his loss. Kenny Tyler complains that everyone keeps bugging him about his older brother's death. The coach continues to hope that after how many losses, the team will make it to the Champions League. To execute the plan, it's time to start winning. He scolded his buddy for trying to replicate the three-point shot at the net because he was never good at it. A disgruntled Kenny Tyler tossed the ball up, and for some reason it never came back. Coach Peterson supports the guy, but warns that he may have to be replaced for the rest of the season. He is considered an important player, but now his condition is only getting worse with every game. Coach Peterson needs a true leader who can get the team together and take the Huskies to the championship. Kenny Tyler seems to keep playing with his brother and doesn't accept the fact that he is no longer on the team. In the next game, the Huskies lose by 12 points. The worst player becomes Kenny Tyler. Suddenly, the guy begins to hear someone whisper giving him advice. The ball suddenly passed to Danny O'Grady himself, after which, the player threw it into the ring.
Things didn't go as smoothly for his opponents and the ball popped out of the ring. The Huskies are trailing by one point until the end of the game. The opposing team has the ball, and suddenly it's out of the hands of the basketball player. Kenny Tyler makes a pass, but the ball takes a strange trajectory and goes straight to the basket. Finally, after trying so hard, the Huskies win the game by three points. Kenny Tyler heard his brother whispering in the locker room again. He praised him and thanked him for a great game. In the shower, the taps opened on their own, and a living Antoine emerged from the water. Kenny Tyler tried to convince himself it was just a hallucination, but he was very tired. Suddenly, his older brother grabbed him from behind. Hitting the ghost didn't work. Antoine grabs him by the neck and reminds his brother of his father's words. The man always said that if they were together, everything would be possible. Except for Kenny Tyler himself, no one else sees the boy. No one notices him because it was Kenny Tyler who summoned his brother's spirit. Now they're going to fight for the championship together. Kenny is now constantly distracted by his brother's jokes and from the team, it looks very strange. The ghost keeps up with him, embarrassing him in front of people close to him and teammates every time. The game ends with the same number of points. Malik Major was already running out of the line, but Antoine's ghost threw him right back to the basket. Later, he covered Ziggier basics so the opponents wouldn't get points. The ghost just sat on the ring and kept throwing the ball away. Even with such cheeky tricks, the game was even. As always, everything would be decided in the final seconds of the game. Kenny Tyler started pushing his brother. The girl, a journalist, realizes that something strange is going on with Kenny. Antoine decides he has to do everything on his own. Dashing across the court, the boy gave a pass to Kenny. The player put the ball in the basket in the style of his dead brother. Thanks to the win, the Huskies finally made it to the big leagues. In the locker room, Kenny's strange behavior raised many questions. The players thought he had just lost his mind because he had suffered the death of his beloved brother. The guy approached RC, but according to her, the invisible man is already keeping her company. In light of recent events, he didn't even realize at first that this was an ironic joke on the part of the journalist. After receiving an invitation for a date, the girl started talking about the game. His victory seems supernatural because the players hang in the air for several seconds and the ball flies on a wild trajectory. Suddenly, Antoine climbed out of the pool and his little brother cried out in wild fright. Then, Kenny began to talk to the strange ghost. R.C. wondered for a moment what the boy might be seeing. Antoine advises against contacting the journalist for she is sure to get wind of something. According to Kenny Tyler, the older brother is just jealous because he can't afford to date girls. For these rude words, Antoine took Kenny for a chokehold right in the middle of the street. He proceeded to torment the poor player even in front of the basketball players who were convinced that Kenny had definitely lost his mind. The players demanded that Kenny explain himself sooner. This seems as strange as possible on the team's part. After agonizing, Kenny tells them he sees his dead brother. He gulps for air, but the players continue to think he is crazy. The younger brother asks the ghost to show up in front of the other players as well, so that they will believe what he said earlier. Kenny throws the ball to a low player and tells him to do a slam dunk because Antoine will help him jump. Without even sprinting, the guy soared through the air and made it to the basket. Everyone is amazed, but not enough to believe the ghost of a dead player. Then Antoine gave them a natural poltergeist and appeared on a big screen. For the 15th time this season, Mascot tried to hit the hoop, but he ended up injured again. Tonight is the first major league game. The reporter's boss sits down with her and says she needs a powerful career breakthrough. With the best team in town, something strange is going on, and Kenny Tyler, a player she's become close to, is definitely involved. If she does a good job with her investigation, she could be on the cover of the best sports magazines. Antoine demands that her brother pass to another player for a three-pointer. Of course, the player succeeds, and this is his first successful attempt out of many throws. A scuffle ensued on the court when the opponent recalled his brother Kenny. The enemy was about to make a free throw, and Antoine abruptly instilled in him. With all his might, the ghost of a dead player launched the ball under the dome. The next time, Antoine possessed the ball, he demanded that the enemy not touch his eyes with his fingers. Frightened, he simply threw the ball away and ran away. Of course, the Huskies got another victory. Kenny Tyler scored a game-high 36 points, breaking every possible basketball record. The team celebrates in a locker room and rejoices in the cool win. Kenny Tyler goes on a date with a journalist who tries to find out the secret, his incredible game. As always in the personal affairs of his brother, intervened Antoine, who absolutely did not like the strange journalist. In the bathroom, Kenny looking between his legs requires him not to get out when not asked. The girl is very important to him and he wants to continue communicating with her. The other man misunderstands him. Antoine continues to pester his younger brother and lavishes his dish with hot sauce and then douses it with water.
the strange date came to an end and Kenny already wanted to kiss the pretty girl, but with a scary face he ducked into his brother's invisible palms. After twitching a little he still beat Antoine to it and kissed the girl on the cheek and then again on the lips. Kenny had a fight with his insistent brother. The coach came out into the noise and asked who he was talking to. Antoine did not stop grumbling and in the end, offended, left his brother, hitting the fisherman from the picture. In fact, Antoine wasn't going anywhere. Husky's team is doing great in the championship. At one point, Antoine even had members of the opposing team punch each other in the face. The Huskies are approaching the finals. During the next game, Antoine demands that his brother listen to him instead of the strange coach. Also, he walked into Luther LaSalle and broke a rule in his body. The player had to be replaced. The formidable player wants Antoine not to touch his team. Kenny asks his brother to stop because he is already starting to hurt the team. Of course, the Huskies win again with a big difference of 19 points. The boss again demands that the girl get information about the unusual team. At this point, watching the tape of the game, she noticed that Luther LaSalle did not even touch the ball. From the reporter's lips, she read that the player had mentioned a deceased player. The team arrived in New York for the final games. The guy stopped by to talk to Kenny because they don't want their big brother on the team anymore. He won't let anyone win and have a fair game just like when he was alive. After hearing this earlier, the ghost is furious and starts rattling the room. Antoine tells the basketball players that they are ungrateful for their recent victories. Kenny calmly explains that if his brother wants to play, he will play. It's time to tell everything to the girl journalist. At this point, the boss and the sports reporters called her over, but the girl still wouldn't give up her boyfriend's secret and threw the sensational article in the trash can. The Huskies made it to the semifinals. The team mascot jumps towards the ring for the 17th time, and this time Antoine still saved the poor player from his injuries. The team is opposed by the student star, a guy named Smith. He expressed his thanks to Kenny Tyler and remembered his excellent brother. The team can't stand up to Smith, and he just rips his opponents apart. Antoine got angry and launched the student star of basketball into the basketball hoop. The poor player was injured and his team lost. The Huskies made it to the finals. Kenny Tyler came to the hospital to check on poor Smith. It turned out the player had a serious concussion and a broken collarbone. The reporter guessed it was Antoine, he's dead, but still in command of his brother. Kenny comes to the locker room before the game to talk to his older brother. He asked him to stay on the bench today and let the team win on its own. Antoine reminds him that they have always been partners and dreamed of becoming champions. For his part, Kenny Tyler believes that he has been on the sidelines all his life and has been in his brother's shadow. The team rebels and says that if Antoine takes the court today, they will refuse to play. Antoine gets angry and quits the team. The coach encourages the boys and asks them to give it their all in the finals. They face the clear favorites, three of the team are planning a big future on an NBA team. Expectedly, the Huskies lose from the start, but they try very hard. The guys are frustrated, they feel like without Antoine, they're really nothing. Kenny Tyler thinks differently and is convinced that they have to try harder. The guy should certainly get back on the court with Antoine, but only in their hearts. The team needs to realize that he's already on the team. Ghost, upon hearing his brother's word, let out a tear. The Huskies began to bounce back with great enthusiasm. Commentators noted the phenomenal play of Kenny Tyler. Zikir Basic makes a three-pointer. With two minutes left in the game, the Huskies are down by only four points. With 17 seconds left in the game, they turn to tight defense. During the pass, Kenny Tyler intercepts the ball and rushes to the basket. The kid makes a shot from behind the three-point line, and that's when Antoine shows up to back his brother up. Kenny Tyler asks him not to touch the ball, and the ghost disappears. No help was needed and the ball went in the basket. The Huskies are the champions. As everyone celebrated the victory, Antoine waved to his brother and headed toward the light. He admits it was his little brother's victory and he only got in the way of the game. Before he left, Antoine recalled his father's words and wished him to be next year's champion as well. Later, Kenny Tyler, looking toward the light. The coach realizes there is a sixth player, Kenny and Antoine. Forever, that's the line, that ends the movie.